Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint again. In this video, we are going to talk of the country's central bank, namely the Reserve Bank of India. The Reserve Bank of India is the central bank of India and it controls the monetary supply. It controls the inflation rates in India, as we have seen in the previous video on monetary policy. And it also ensures that banks adhere to certain norms, rules and procedures. The history of Reserve Bank of India is rather astonishing and we should know more about Reserve Bank of India in order to understand uh, the functioning of the Reserve Bank of India in a better way. The RBI of the Reserve Bank of India was established by the RBI Act of 1934 on the 1st of April 1935. 1st of April 1935 saw the birth of the Reserve Bank of India. The purpose of the Reserve Bank of India or the stated objective of Reserve Bank of India is to regulate the issue of bank notes and keeping of reserves with a view to securing, securing monetary stability in India and generally to operate the currency and credit system of the country to its advantage. We'll have to read it in different parts to, have, to understand it better. The purpose of RBI is to is regulate the issue of bank notes. This is the first purpose. That means that the RBI is in, entrusted with the charge of regulating the supply of bank notes, which is the currency. If you have observed, every currency note will have the signature of the governor of the Reserve Bank of India on the same. So to that extent, the Reserve Bank of India's primary job is to regulate the issue of bank notes. And the keeping of reserves, we have seen in the monetary policy uh, video, what are the quantitative methods offered by Reserve Bank of India. And one of the quantitative methods suggested by Reserve Bank of India, or rather imposed by Reserve Bank of India, is the keeping of reserves, cash reserve ratio and the statutory liquidity ratio. So, the stated objective of Reserve Bank of India is not only to print and regulate uh, currency notes, but it's also to uh, ensure that enough reserves are kept with a, with a view to securing monetary stability. This is another very important point. We have to, the RBI has to ensure that the monetary stability is kept up. There cannot be a situation where there is a shortage of currency notes or there cannot be a situation where there is a glut or excess of currency notes. So we, they'll have to ensure that there is a steady supply of currency notes and there should be the monetary system of the country should be stable. In other words, the value of rupee should not go up or should not go down drastically. That is another objective of the Reserve Bank of India. And generally, to operate the currency and credit system of the country to its advantage. The RBI is also interested with the objective of ensuring that the credit system and the currency system of the country is operated to the country's advantage. When I say it to its advantage, it means to the country's advantage. The RBI is the principal authority or the principal agent by which the monetary stability of the country is maintained and also the currency and credit system of the country is maintained properly. That's the most important thing as far as the Reserve Bank of India is concerned. The Reserve Bank of India was nationalized in the year 1949. We have seen that how the Reserve Bank of India was started on the 1st of April 1935. It was uh, uh, started and then the nationalization of Reserve Bank of India took place in 1949, which means that the, the entire share capital of the Reserve Bank of India was taken over by the government in 1949. The central office or the head office of the Reserve Bank of India was established in Kolkata initially. Kolkata was, uh, was where it all started. As we know, the uh, East India Company came into India through the uh, uh, shores of Calcutta. So most development in India started with the city of Calcutta. And the Reserve Bank of India was no exception. It was started in the city of Calcutta, and, but was permanently moved to Mumbai in the year 1937. Well before nationalization, Reserve Bank of India moved over to Mumbai as its headquarters and has been functioning out of Mumbai since then. The central office or the head office, we call the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the central office or the head office, sometimes is known as the head office of the bank, sometimes is known as the central office, but RBI prefers to use the word central office is where the governor and uh, is, the, is where the governor sits and where policies are framed and formulated. The governor of Reserve Bank of India, the present governor, as you all know, is 
Mr. Urjit Patel. He sits in the central office of the Reserve Bank of India, which is based in uh, which is based in Mumbai. And the central office is the place where all the policies of the Reserve Bank of India are formulated and for subsequent implementation by the various authorities, including commercial banks, including various uh, governmental agencies, etc. There are 22 regional offices of the RBI. In practically every state, there is a Reserve Bank of India office. It may not be so that the Reserve Bank of India office in every state is in the state capital, but there are Reserve Bank of India offices in every state of the country. To give you an example, in Kerala, the office of the Reserve Bank of India is in Cochin and not in Trivandrum. But in other major states like Tamil Nadu, it's in Chennai, in Karnataka, it's in Bangalore, in, uh, uh, in Telangana, it is in Hyderabad, in, in Maharashtra, it's in Mumbai, and in uh, uh, West Bengal, it's in Calcutta, and so on. There are 22 regional offices of the country, there are regional offices of the Reserve Bank of India, which support the central office in the implementation of the various policies formulated by the Central Bank of India, by, by the Central Office of the Reserve Bank of India. Since 1949, the Reserve Bank of India is fully owned by the Government of India. What are the functions of RBI? Having seen how it was established earlier in 1935, it was started in Kolkata, it was nationalized in 1949, it moved to Bombay before nationalization, and the central office is located in Mumbai ever since then. The Governor of Reserve Bank of India sits in the central office of the RBI. He is assisted by a team of deputy governors and uh, uh, executive directors and so on. There are 22 regional offices of the Reserve Bank of India in the country. These re uh, regional offices support the central office in the implementation of the various policies that are formulated by the Reserve Bank of India central office. Having seen all this, let's also see what are the main functions of Reserve Bank of India. The main functions are, first of all, to issue currency. As I told you just a while ago, every currency note in India will bear the signature of the governor of the Reserve Bank of India. The primary function of the Reserve Bank of India is to issue currency. For this purpose, Reserve Bank of India has got currency note printing presses in different places, especially in Mysore and in Nashik. Nashik and Mysore are the two places where the Reserve Bank of India has got currency printing presses. These presses operate virtually on two ships a day, especially in recent times when the uh, demonetization was announced by the Prime Minister on the 8th of November 2016. Since then, the printing presses at Nashik and Mysore have been working virtually non-stop, three ships a day. So the primary purpose of the Reserve Bank of India, the primary a uh, function of Reserve Bank of India is to issue currency notes and ensure that these currency notes are not short in supply at any point in time. As we have seen, there has been a lot of flack for the government and for the Reserve Bank of India in recent times following the shortage of currency notes in the ATMs because of the demonetization move. But fortunately, things have moved on to a better shape now and most ATMs are stacked with cash, although not of the denomination uh, desired by the uh, people. So the primary purpose is to issue currency notes. Then the Reserve Bank of India is the banker to the government and advisor to the government. All the government accounts are maintained with the Reserve Bank of India and the, the Reserve Bank of India in a way acts as an advisor to the government also in formulating various monetary policies. These, these policies are all formulated by the Reserve Bank of India in consultation and in consonance with the government's objectives, which are anyway stated public. It is a lender of the last resort. The lender of the last resort is a very famous uh, statement because the RBI is the place to go to when everything, where everything else has failed. That is why we often say that when a person is always helpful, he is sometimes referred to as the RBI, because the RBI can never fail. The RBI will never fail. It is the lender of the last resort. When everything else fails, go to the Reserve Bank of India. They will print currency notes. They will give you money in circulation. They will you know, formulate interest rate policies. They will do everything to keep the economy afloat. So the RBI is also known as the lender of the last resort. RBI lends to the government of India and to the state governments. The state governments of the various uh, states in India 
very often borrow from the Reserve Bank of India to meet their fiscal deficits and the Reserve Bank of India also lends to the central government of India as well. The, apart from issuing currency, the most important function of RBI is to play a dominating role in formulating and implementing the monetary policy of the government. As we have seen in the previous video on monetary policy, the policies are all framed by the Reserve Bank of India in consonance and in consent with the government of India. For example, when the government of India says that this is your inflation target, then the Reserve Bank of India will have to formulate a monetary policy which is in line with the inflation target prescribed by the government of India. So very often, the monetary policies are implemented by the Reserve Bank of India in consonance and consent of the government of India. So they play, uh, the Reserve Bank of India plays a very, very crucial role in formulating and implementing the policies of the government of India. Yet another major function of the Reserve Bank of India is that it manages and regulates the forex or the foreign exchange. It manages and regulates the forex. Every action of import and export is guided by the principles of foreign exchange and the Reserve Bank of India in India plays a very, very crucial role in regulating and managing this foreign exchange. They devise various policies with respect to import of goods, import of capital goods, import of consumer goods, import of services into the country. They also manage and uh, formulate policies regarding export as well. They also manage, you know, um, they, they also manage the policies regarding the uh, import of uh, various items into the country and in, with a view to ensuring that the balance of trade or the balance of payment position of India does not suffer very badly. So RBI is in charge of managing the forest exchange also. The Reserve Bank of India's affairs are controlled by a board called the Central Board of Directors. They are, their affairs are governed by a central board of directors. The board is appointed by the government of India in keeping with the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934. The board of Reserve Bank of India is constituted and uh, is constituted and appointed by the government of India in tune with the Reserve Bank of India Act. Very often you can see news items saying that Mr. X has been elevated from the position of executive director to the deputy governor of Reserve Bank of India or the Reserve Bank of India governor has been appointed. We saw in the recent times, Mr. Raghuram Rajan, who was the governor of Reserve Bank of India, uh, did not seek reappointment and he was replaced by Mr. Urjit Patel as the Reserve Bank of India governor. Uh, and he is the current governor of Reserve Bank of India. Mr. Urjit Patel was appointed by the uh, government of India. The Central Board of Directors or the Governing Council of Reserve Bank of India is appointed or nominated for a period of four years from the time they up, uh, take up office. The constitution of Reserve Bank of India is that there are official directors full-time, governor and not more than four deputy governors. There, are, there is a governor of Reserve Bank of India. He is assisted by a team of not more than four deputy governors. And these five people are full-time employees of the Reserve Bank of India. They are responsible for the formulation of the policies in, con in, consent, with the, uh, in consent with the government of India. There are non-official uh, non directors as well. These are nominated by the government of India. There are 10 directors from various fields and two government officials. In addition to these non-official directors, there are also four directors, one each from the local boards. Of the local boards meaning, there are four local boards of RBI, one each in Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata and Chennai. These four boards appoint one director each to the central board of uh, the directors of the Reserve Bank of India. This is the constitution of the Reserve Bank of India. The functions, the board of directors function in a way that they, con they control the general superintendence and direction of the bank's affairs. When I say bank's affairs, I mean the, the affairs of Reserve Bank of India. The local boards, as I told you, are in one each for the four regions of the country. They are situated in Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi and Chennai. The membership of the local board consists of five members each. They are all appointed by the central government. These four members, are these five members in each local board are appointed by the central government. These five members of the local board, from them, one of them is selected to the central board of the governing council of Reserve Bank of India. And again, just like the governor and the deputy governors, the term of appointment of the uh, board, of, uh, board of directors in the local boards 
or the regional boards as we may call them, at least for a period of four years. The functions of the local board are to advise the central board on local matters and to represent territorial and economic interests of the local cooperative and indigenous banks. It's very obvious that when we say a local board, it means that it caters to a specific region. The uh, Mumbai uh, local board caters to the western region. Kolkata uh, local board caters to the eastern region. The Delhi local board caters to the northern regions of the country. And the local board in Chennai constitutes, or the local board in Chennai takes care of the bank's requirements in the south of the country. So each region of the country has got different requirements at different times. And the, the, the requirements of these regions are all indigenous, which means that they are particular to that region and they are not particular to the entire country. For example, what is applicable in the south, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Kerala may not be the same as what is applicable to the western region of the country. So it is the responsibility of the local board of RBI to advise the central board of the RBI sitting in Mumbai that these are the indigenous requirements of our region and as a central board you please take care of these indigenous requirements. So that is why a member from the local board is appointed to the central board of RBI. We have seen how what is the constitution of the central board of RBI and we have seen in that that one member of the central board is from the local board, is from the regional board. There are four members from each of these regional or the local boards from Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai. And also the Reserve Bank of India does the financial supervision. Financial supervision is a major function of RBI because we have seen that there have been many instances where uh, non-banking finance companies, for example, have taken away the monies of depositors and not returned them and all that. So this, this department was formed not too long ago uh, for the purpose of supervising the financial activities in the financial markets of the country. The Reserve Bank of India form, performs this function under the guidance of the Board of Financial Supervision or the BFS. This board was constituted in 1994, as I told you not very long ago, it's just about 23 years ago that the Board of Financial Supervision was formed as a committee of the Central Board of Directors of the Reserve Bank of India. The Board, of De uh, board for Financial Supervision is a committee on the Central Board of the Reserve Bank of India. This was constituted in 1994. If, you, if our memories serve right, the early 1990s saw a spate of non-banking financial companies take money from the public and vanish. And it is then that the RBI acted tough. They formed this department called the Department of Banking Supervision to ensure that regulations are put in place and to ensure that the depositors' interests are protected at all times. And that is why this board was formed in the year 1994. And this board is a member of the Central Board of Directors of the Reserve Bank of India as a committee member. The primary objective of the Board of Financial Supervision or the BFS is to undertake consolidated supervision of the financial, under financial sector comprising commercial banks, financial institutions and non-banking finance companies. Although it is said that the BFS is supposed to take care of the entire banking, uh, of the entire uh, financial sector, including the banks, financial institutions and the NBFCs, uh, let's be honest that the BFS was formed primarily with a view to reining in or with a view to uh, regulating the non-banking financial companies which, have, which had at that time gone haywire. The Board of Financial Supervision also restructures the bank inspections, the system of bank inspections. They introduce the off-site surveillance, they strengthen the role of auditors, statutory auditors, and they strengthen the internal defenses of the supervised institutions. This is, this is the role of the Board of Financial Supervision of the Reserve Bank of India, which is formed as a committee in the Central Board of Directors of the RBI. The legal framework of RBI is very interesting. The RBI functions under acts administered by the Reserve Bank of India. First of all, there is the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934, under which the RBI itself was formed. Then you have the Public Debt Act of 1944 and the Government Securities Act of 2006. Then we have the Government Securities Regulations of 2007, the Banking Regulation Act of 1949, the Foreign Exchange Management Act or the FEMA 
of 1999. This again was an offshoot of several large-scale violations in the foreign exchange sector uh, in the early part of 1990s. And just like the Board of Financial Supervision, the FEMA Act or the FEMA was formed, the Foreign Exchange Management Act was introduced in the year 1999. The Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act of 2002 Chapter 2 is also another addition to the RBI's acts administered by the Reserve Bank of India. And then you have the Credit Information Regulation, the Credit Information Companies Regulation Act of 2005. And then you have the Payment and Settlements Act of 2007. So these are the different acts which are monitored and administered by the Reserve Bank of India. All these acts serve a different purpose at different points of time and it is the duty of Reserve Bank of India to ensure that these acts are being implemented in the letter and spirit with which and the purpose for which they were formed. The function of RBI, one is act, it acts as a monetary authority. As a monetary authority, it formulates, implements and, and uh, monitors the monetary policy. We have already seen what is the monetary policy, how it is formulated and how the uh, RBI manages the supply of currency notes both the quantitative and the qualitative methods, etc., in the, in the earlier video. The objective of these functions is to maintain price stability and ensuring adequate flow of credit to the productive sectors. The point to be noted here is that credit must be available to productive sectors and not to non-productive sectors. So the RBI ensures that money supply is maintained adequately and the credit flow is given substantially to the productive sectors of the economy. And it also acts as a regulator and supervision or supervisor of the financial system. Prescribes the broad parameters of the banking operations within which the country's banking and financial system will function. The broad parameters of the operational system of the banking and financial system will be decided and implemented by the Reserve Bank of India. Maintain public confidence in the system, protect the depositors' interest, and provide cost-effective banking services to the public. These are three different operations. One is first maintaining confidence, public confidence in the system. The public confidence is the greatest indicator of the well-being of an economy. The public confidence in the banking system is perhaps the greatest indicator of the well-being of an economy. And the primary objective of RBI is to ensure that this public, system, public confidence is never lost in the system. And to protect the depositors' interest. As I told you a little while ago, in the early part of 1990s, several non-banking finance companies had vanished with the depositors' money. And hence, the RBI acted swiftly to introduce the board for financial supervision and ensure that these depositors' rights and interests are protected. And then provide cost-effective banking solutions to the public. Banking solutions are available freely to the public now, freely in the sense that they are available in ample measure to the public now, but they have to be cost-effective. And it is the duty of Reserve Bank of India to provide these cost-effective banking solutions to the members of the public. As a manager of foreign exchange, what does RBI do? It manages the Foreign Exchange Management Act of, 2000, of 1999. It manages the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999 to facilitate external trade and payment and promote orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in India. As I told you, foreign exchange market means managing the market of imports and exports. Imports could lead to payment in foreign exchange. Exports will lead to receipts in foreign exchange. There could be uh, other remittances received to and from India. All these is managed by the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. And it is the objective of Reserve, and it is the purpose of Reserve Bank of India, or is rather one of the functions of Reserve Bank of India to ensure that this act is implemented in the letter and spirit with which it was formulated. So that is why we have various departments in the Foreign Exchange Department of various uh, authorities in the Foreign Exchange Department of Reserve Bank of India ensuring that the FEMA is implemented fully and in lateral spirit. FEMA is Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. As an issuer of currency, RBI issues an exchange or destroys currency and coins not fit for circulation. RBI does not only issue fresh currency, but it also destroys currency and coins not fit for circulation. 
we have seen in the very recent past the demonetization uh, announcement made by the Prime Minister on the 8th of November 2016, by, by which in one stroke he demonetized the old 500 and rupees 1000 notes. These notes were all deposited into the commercial banks by the members of the public and these notes were then transferred to the Reserve Bank of India and it is the duty of Reserve Bank of India to destroy these notes which are not fit for circulation anymore, number one. Number two, se several notes which they continue to be legal tender but they, can, they are not fit for circulation because they have become either torn or too soiled, people may not accept these notes. So the commercial banks segregate the soiled and unfit notes for circulation or rather the soiled and notes not fit for circulation, they segregate these notes and send them to the RBI. The RBI <coughs> destroys these notes and then issues fresh currency notes. That is the system of destroying notes. Similarly, there are several coins which are not fit for circulation anymore because they are not legal tender. Some of these coins which are not fit for legal, which are not legal tender now are the earlier 5 paise, 10 paise, 25 paise coins. These are all not legal tender anymore. In fact, much earlier than that, there used to be 1 paise, 3 paise coins as well. 1 paise, 3 paise, 5 paise, 10 paise, 25 paise coins are all not legal tender anymore. So it is the duty of RBI to collect these coins and destroy them so that these do not get circulated again in the market. So it is the duty of RBI not only to issue new currency but also to destroy the old currency and coins which are not fit for circulation. The objective is to give public adequate quantity of supplies of currency and coins in, the, in good quality. It's not only in good quality but they should also be legal tender. What is legal tender? Which means that which the currency which can be accepted legally. For example, today if you talk of accepting an old 1000 rupee note or an old 500 rupee note, it is not legal. It is illegal to accept or to give old 500 and 1000 rupee notes now. So they are not legal tender anymore. So it is the duty of RBI <coughs> to protect the uh, interest of the public and ensure that they have good supply of, they have constant supply of good currency notes, that means which are not soiled and torn and all that, they are fit for circulation and also ensure that these currency notes are legal tender. RBI also plays a developmental role. What is the developmental role? It performs a wide range of promotional functions to support the national objectives. There are some related functions which RBI performs and these are, they are the bankers to the government as we have seen, performs merchant banking function for the central and state governments and also acts as their banker and banker to banks maintaining banking accounts of all scheduled banks. RBI has got certain subsidiaries. These subsidiaries are all owned by Reserve Bank of India but they are coming under the RBI arm but under a different name. That they are called the subsidiaries of Reserve Bank of India. The first and foremost subsidiary is the Deposit and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India. Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India, DICGCI. The Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India protects the depositors' interests and says that any deposit made with a scheduled commercial bank up to an amount of rupees 1 lakh is insured and will be reimbursed by the Reserve Bank of India or the DICGCI which is an arm of the Reserve Bank of India will reimburse depositors in case a bank fails to make payment but such insurance is available only for deposits up to a value of rupees 1 lakh not more than that. The second subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India is the called the Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited. The Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited is the agency which prints the currency notes and these, uh, th this Mudran Private Limited is the one which operates the currency notes printing presses in Nashik and Mysore. The National Housing Bank is also a subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India. The National Housing Bank was promoted to, uh, to circulate policies regarding housing loans to be given by the various agencies in the country including scheduled commercial banks and the specialized housing finance firms and this NHB or the National Housing Bank is a subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India. All these companies, the DICGCI, Bharatiya Reserve Bank, Note Mudran Private Limited and the National Housing Bank are owned by the Reserve Bank of India. This is about the Reserve Bank of India. 
uh, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, till I meet you again in the next video. Bye for now and thanks for watching.